Haha, <laughs> how's it going gamers? Today I bring you a list of 10 things everyone should know before playing Ashen. Now my wife left me and she took the kids, so make sure to smash that like button below. One like equals one prayer. Number 1. Spend time in character customization. The last thing you want in your Burger King... Wait, this is wrong video. The last thing you want in Ashen is to make a character that you will want to change the looks of after. Characters don't have a huge variety in how they look, but having a character that you will get bored of quickly might ruin your gaming experience. The best thing about this game is they can customize the female characters to have a beard. That might get boring after a while though, and it's really impractical for many reasons, like blowjobs. Number 2. Complete all the side quests. The world of Ashen is filled with lore and adventures. Make sure to complete every single side quest you get. Every side quest in this game will give you some kind of a reward, like giving your character permanent buffs, unlocking various different features and help build the town. Also through doing side quests you will uncover some information about the story of the game, also known as lore, and even level up the side characters. When the characters level up they will become stronger and at max level change appearance to resemble a more experienced version of themselves, which I think is pretty cool. In the first few side quests you will unlock perks like fast travel, unlocking the Crimson Guard which is the same as Dark Souls Estus Flask, and even a storage chest to put away your items. Number 3. Don't drop items. So as I was speaking of the storage chest, you really don't want to throw away any items you find. There is no dismantle or sell feature on any item, but every item is unique and can be stored in chest for later use. Dropping an item will get rid of it permanently, meaning you won't be able to get it back unless you start a new save file. I made that mistake myself and boy do I regret it. Number 4. Explore everything. Exploration is the key to Ashen. Tons of unique items can be found in the world of Ashen, like for instance every single weapon and piece of armor is unique and are hidden in various locations. You can also find black feathers which raise your stats permanently and you might run into a few dungeons which will give you lots of various loot like crafting materials and maybe even a cool weapon or armor. Make sure to remember to use your co-op partner to climb high walls to get to areas you couldn't while solo. Also later in the game you will uncover a new way to travel to certain areas so don't get too worried about not picking up every item. Number 5. Don't buy healing items. The worst way to spend money in this game is by buying healing items. You can easily discover them by looting dead remains and killing wildlife. There will only be a few moments where you're fully out of healing items unless you suck of course. Regardless if you're good or not though, you will still have a crimson god, which you can improve on how much it heals you and how many charges it has. So if you are struggling for health, make sure to invest some points and upgrades instead. Number 6. Buy talismans. Having a full set of talismans will make your experience so much easier. They don't cost too much and the long term reward of them is really worth it. You can get perks that increase your damage, health and stamina all while being unique in the way they work. Make sure to keep checking out what talismans you have after you complete a chunk of the main and side stories. You will keep unlocking new ones throughout. But remember, every time you change a talisman it will cost you scoria but later on in the game that shouldn't be a problem since it's quite easy to obtain. Number 7. Style over stats. When selecting your go-to weapon, don't focus on the stats too much. It's more important to have a moveset that you are more comfortable with, and importantly, having a weapon that looks badass. You can upgrade any weapon several times to increase its damage, but if you want to have weapons that help you get through the game easier, focus on crit chance. Having 30% or more critical chance will make killing enemies feel like it's supposed to be easy. If you're a two-handed weapon user, remember that caves require you to hold the lantern and leave you only with one hand to spare. Now if you're not using that one hand to destroy the December, you will probably use it to attack monsters in the dungeons, so don't forget to upgrade your one-handed weapon too. You can still drop the lantern and use your two-handed weapon, but that makes you less mobile and you will only see enemies in the distance that the lantern reaches. Number 8. You can store Scoria. The further you play this game, the harder it will get. You will also unlock the ability to purchase Scoria bags. Dying in this game makes you drop all your Scoria unless you have them in the loot bags that you get from enemies or buying them. If you die a lot in this game, I would recommend keeping most of your Scoria in the bags unless you're in the town ready to splash all of it on upgrades and hookers, whatever. This might also be useful before entering dungeons because most of them are quite lengthy and many gamers have lost their lives and sanity in them. 
please pray for them. Number 9, turn up the difficulty. Is this game too easy for you? Well don't worry, after the first big dungeon you will rescue a companion that will unlock you a new game mode. The game mode is called Children of Sista and it makes the game way more challenging. The enemies will still be the same and do the same amount of damage but your character will have a much smaller health and stamina pool. In return, you get a cool tattoo in your face. And a secret ending. If this game mode still doesn't make the game too challenging, there's still something that you can do. Disabling companions is an option in the game but then you won't be able to get to the dungeons. Well don't worry, you can always buy a talisman that will let you get past the dungeon door without a companion. Now enjoy playing the game, elite gamer, let me know how it goes. Number 10. Get good.